Tash Dile and welcome to Tibet This Week. This is Sakina Bhatt with another edition of Weekly News on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. Let's look at the headlines. His Holiness the Dalai Lama interacts with youth from Southeast Asia. Beijing has increased aggression to divert the world's focus from the coronavirus pandemic, says Si Kyung Dr. Lubsang Singe. Tibetans tested positive with COVID-19 in India. Italy protests China on Tibet Tiananmen Square, Taiwan, Hong Kong and Xinjiang issues. European Union High Representative raises Tibet during EU-China strategic dialogue. Tibetan solo peace marcher of Switzerland raps with appeal to UN in Geneva. Canada stand by oppressed people including Tibetans, says Erin O'Toole. UNPO urged to do more on Tibetan issues. His Holiness the Dalai Lama gave an audience to more than 700 young people from eight Southeast Asian countries at his residence in Dharamshala on Sunday this week. His Holiness reiterated his words of practicing compassion, keeping in view the idea of humans as a family. Uh, since a lot of problems uh, our own creation, therefore we have the responsibility to tackle this problem, to reduce this problem. Logically, problem which created by a human being, then logically we also have the uh, ability to reduce other topics such as inter-religious so harmony, now, Tibet's now, natural environment, Nalanda tradition and Ahimsa nature, and Karuna were also discussed. The virtual dialogue continued with the question-answer session. Beijing has increased aggression to divert the world's focus from the coronavirus pandemic, says Si Kyung Dr. Lopsang Singe to the print on Wednesday this week. While discussing on the issues concerning India-China border, Si Kyung mentioned India spending about $60 billion in managing its border tensions with China. You have all these, you know, uh, thousands and thousands of Indian troops patrolling the border and Indian government is spending about $60 billion a year. So a huge cost to the defense. Um, and in some ways, you know, um, it could have been diverted and spent on other educational, health and migrant labors, so on and so forth, you know. Dr. Singe has been giving a series of interviews to the Indian media such as TV9 Bharat Varsh, India News and Republic TV concerning the issue of Tibet with relation to increasing tension at the Indian borders. And there is external pressure, the international community you know, the WHO included 130 countries signing up to investigate the origin of coronavirus, which obviously happened in Wuhan, the city of China. And because of all these factors, I think they are looking at diverting tactics, you know, and hence, you know, uh, putting some pressure on India at the border and also with South China Sea and Taiwan and Hong Kong, where they have passed a security bill to control people in Hong Kong. Even in Tibet, the actions taken are, you know, they reflect more paranoia, uh, where they are being very, very strict and very, very repressive. The recent adventurism is part of the expansionist design. And politically, whenever you have some internal tension or problems, you want to distract it by, you know, raising uh, external problems and external challenges. And hence, you can see from South China Sea to Hong Kong to Taiwan and 3,488 kilometers long border between Tibet and India. Having said that, after Tibet was occupied, the Chinese leaders, including Mao Zedong, have said that Tibet is the palm and the five fingers are Ladakh, Sikkim, Nepal, Bhutan, and Arunachal. So they have taken over the palm. Now they are you know, taking over or penetrating to all these five fingers. More than 10 Tibetans have been tested positive with COVID-19 in India, in which few positive cases were all found to have travel history to red zones, mainly Delhi. 
CTA task force led by Health Kalu in coordination with the settlement offices and its branch hospitals has put in place containment strategy and isolated those who had contacts. Meanwhile, Health Kalu has urged public cooperation to check community transmission in its initial stage. Marking the 31st year since the massacre of the Tiananmen Square carried out by the government of the People's Republic of China, Italia-Tibet Association in collaboration with the Tibetan community of Italy and other associations organized a protest rally against China for its egregious human rights violations in Tibet, Hong Kong and East Turkestan. More than 50 people, including Italian parliamentarians, Tibetans, Taiwanese and Hong Kongers, assembled in the capital city of Italy, Rome, in these difficult times to participate in the protest. Ambassador Giulio Terzi, Italy's former ambassador to the U.S. and permanent representative to the United Nations in New York, called Tibet to be the first victim of China's eliminationist and genocidal agenda. Ambassador Terzi, who is also a former finance minister of Italy, was addressing the demonstration gathering organized by Italy-Tibet Association in collaboration with the Tibetan community of Italy and other associations in Rome on 4th June 2020. In his first strategic dialogue with China after assuming the post as the chief of the foreign affairs of the EU, Joseph Borrell raised the issue of Tibet and a number of individual cases with China. During a virtual meeting on June 9th for the preparation of the 10th annual strategic dialogue between the two parties, Borrell stated that his Chinese counterpart Wang Li's statement didn't give any details about the issues he raised relating to Tibet. It is understandable as he had to cover the whole gamut of discussion which covered numerous areas of concerns and cases between the EU and China. In the past, the EU has constantly raised and spoken about Tibet in its bilateral and multilateral dialogues and also the UN Human Rights Council. A 45-year-old Siring Wangdu, resident of Switzerland, concluded his solo peace march with an appeal to the UN Human Rights Office in Geneva on 5th June 2020. In the appeal letter, Tsering Wangdu wrote, Had the world taken serious note of these violations and stopped China in its path of destruction, maybe this global pandemic could have been avoided and controlled. Wangdu began the peace march from Winterthur, Zurich in northern Switzerland on 27 May 2020 to raise awareness about the human rights violations in Tibet and to make China accountable for its violations. He covered around 279 kilometers walking. Canadian Parliament member and official opposition critic in foreign affairs, Erin Michael O'Toole, appealed the Canadian government to restore Canada's place in the world as a leader in promoting freedom and human rights around the world by standing with people of Hong Kong, Taiwan, Syria and Iran, fighting for their freedom and championing the cause of oppressed peoples, including Tibetans. O'Toole warned the Canadian government of China's response towards the call for reconciliation with His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the Tibetans and its handling of issues relating to Taiwan and Hong Kong and said the Canadian parliament will not legitimize the undemocratic nature of this Chinese National Party Congress. Rigzin Genkhang, EU Advocacy Officer of Office of Tibet Brussels, urged the unrepresented nations and people's organization to do more on the issue of Tibet. Ms. Genkhang attended a day-long UNPO presidency meeting on Saturday last week. She thanked UNPO for their extraordinary work on the issue of Tibet while putting forward a few concrete suggestions that are to be discussed more in detail with the Secretary General on a later date. The meeting brought together presidency members from all eight countries including Tibet, in addition to the President, two Vice Presidents, the Secretary General and staff. So much for today. See you next time and have a great weekend.